Hello and welcome to another installment of a series of videos in which I'll be talking you through the basics of the programming language Python. If you haven't watched the first few videos yet, then I suggest you do that now. Otherwise, let's get started. Previously, we've looked at conditions, logical operators, and if statements. In this episode, we'll be exploring another type of data known as a list. Previously, we've used the integer, float, and string data types, which can be one value. A list is a data type which can store multiple values. Lists in other languages tend to be all of the same type, for instance, a list of integers or a list of strings. However, in Python, lists can be of mixed type. This means that a list could contain strings, integers, and all the other types. We can define an empty list by giving a variable a name followed by an equals and then a set of two square brackets. We can assign a populated list by adding values between these square brackets separated by commas. Again, we can have multiple different types of data within this list. If you're feeling particularly wild, you can nest lists inside other lists, but don't worry too much about doing that for now, just know that it can be done. The list data type has lots of different functions. A lot of these are exactly the same as the string functions. For example, the len function, previously used to find out how long a string was, can be used to find out how many items there are inside a list. We'd use it the exact same way that we'd use it on a string, by surrounding our variable name with the len function. There are also other functions that you can use for lists. These include append, insert, pop, sort, and reverse. Append allows you to add additional items to the end of your list. Insert allows you to insert a new value at a given index. Pop allows you to remove a value at a given index. Sort sorts the item in the list. By default, it's by ASCII value and in ascending order. Reverse reverses the order of the list. There's loads more, but we could be here forever looking at them. To retrieve a value at a certain point in the list, we follow a list variable with a set of square brackets, between them the index of the value you're trying to access. Remember, indexing begins at zero, so to access the first item we use zero, the second we use one, and so on. There are also some clever little things you can do with indexing. You can return a range of values from your list, i.e. from index x to index y. To do this, instead of using a single value to index our list, we use an initial value, followed by a colon, and then a second value. This states that we want to get all values in the list from the index of the first number to the index of the second number. Just as a warning, range indexing is exclusive, in that it returns all values up to, but not including the final range value. You can also state that you want everything before or after a specific index. To do this, we use a colon, similarly to the range, but we leave one side blank. If we want to get all values from index 2 to the end, we use a 2 followed by a colon. If we want to get all values before index 2, we use a colon followed by a 2. This range indexing can also be used on strings. And now to the bit that we've all been waiting for, the challenge. The goal of this video's challenge is to create a program which gathers the user's information and stores it in a list. Before you panic, no, we're not going to go full Cambridge Analytica on this, just gather some data that we can store in a list. I'll be taking a name, an age, your card details, and three math scores. Forget the card details. We're then going to display all this information, as well as the math scores, in descending order, with an average of the three shown after them. As always, if you want to have a go at this yourself, pause now, otherwise let's get on with it. What we'll do first is create an empty list that we'll fill with our information. We can then combine the append function we discussed before with an input statement asking the user for their name. We'll do this again for their age and then the three scores. Remember to convert each value to its appropriate type. For example, for age, I'm going to be using integer, and for the scores, I'm going to be using float values. We then need to isolate the grades somehow. To do this, I'll be using a range index to get everything from index 2 to the end. This is then going to be stored in a new list variable called scores. I can then use the sort function to sort the scores in ascending order. For this is an issue, we want descending. After the sort function, we can use the reverse function to switch the order of the items in the list. This will then have them in descending order. Finally, we can display this information with a series of print statements accessing our lists appropriately. For the average of the maths test, we add up each of the scores that we've stored in that list and divide them by however many there are. This is looking good. Let's test it out. I'll take the roles of the users Bill and Andrea. Bill is 16. They scored 15 on the first test, but pulled it back with an 82 and a 70. Andrea is 17, and they scored a 98 on their first test, but slipped up with a 50 in their second and a 47 in the third. We can see that Bill scored an average of 55.66. Andrea scored an average of 65. I'm afraid Bill's going to be thrown out to the wolves tonight. You should have revised harder, Bill. The United Kingdom desires excellence, Bill. You've let us all down, Bill. Thank you all for watching. If you don't want to end up like Bill, remember to like and subscribe. Hit that bell button to keep updated with the series, and there's also some handy tutorial links in the description below. Remember to practice the skills that you've learned in each episode, and thank you again for all your support. I'll see you next time.